Hi, and welcome to, to this, uh, I don't know if what it would be like, a short episode of uh, SAP technology update. Um, so I've been trying to figure out what the South Cloud platform is and the latest thing was the business rules engine. And I'll, in this uh, episode of this video, I'll just go through it. I've also created a Facebook Live event where I went through the same thing. It wasn't ideal, so that's why I'm trying to do it again. Um, so the agenda uh, is, uh, well, I'll share a little about how it does work uh, and how you can create your own rule. Then I will show you how you can call this, this rule. And then I'll do a comparison with the process orchestration system. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into this one. So here we have our business rules uh, or start or one step further out. Here I have, we have the services on our BM system. Um, so here we have all the services and I think you, that's a bit too far. So we have it here. This one is uh, quite new. I'm looking forward to test that one in one of the next episodes of this unnamed uh, podcast video blog series. But so far, this is what I've been looking into. So here you got the business rule editor. Um, so one of the things here, if you can open the documentation and that's actually one of the better documentations. Well, it's a P standard style of documentation, uh, giving you some insight about what's happening and how to use the different services. They exist um, a little slow, maybe. It came just before. Okay, so now it's, it's getting better. Uh, so it's beta, obviously, and then it states here what's new. I don't know if actually there's something changed since I created my video. No, no, no. Okay, so here at least we can see the, the age of this. There's something about the concepts. There's something about uh, uh, if you want to consume this, there's uh, some runtime APIs references. And here you can see you can call this very service to invoke. There's uh, the XSRF token to call login. So that's the API, but I guess the interesting part is about, uh, so there's some, some setup about uh, giving your user access to, to these uh, runtime rules you have to, to do before you get started. And I think there's actually a, a a good introduction on these uh, concepts, what you just need to, to do there. Uh, and it's something about giving this role, or creating this role and assigned your user to it. So you're able to, to edit this. And I think there was two other uh, similar criteria that you need to do. Um, so you, I guess you can either do it from here or you can do it from the normal editor mode. Um, so here it's checking that these user exist and they are valid. Um, so we will open the BM tool. I don't know if my internet connection is slow or why it's taking a bit long here. Uh, but obviously there's a lot of uh, projects going on and I think last time I tried it was fairly quick. So here you can create new projects um, just by adding and go and create a new one. But uh, there's a lot of things to maintain and make sure that you're trying out and verifying. So I won't do that now. So here we just have it. 
Uh, one of the things to notice is on all of these objects that you're creating, you all the time have to uh, specify what are the runtime vari variant, and this always needs to be cloud. So that's a bit strange. So here we have our, uh, our projects, uh, and I have created um, a data object called person. If we want to create edit this then we can add a new parameter just want to test this and then we have to go into this element also and here we also have to specify what are the the runtime version it seems like so that's because at the moment we don't have any other options. So maybe this would be possible to, to run it in other systems or something like that. Um, and then we're back to the person. And we can then validate and there's an activate here which would activate this change. But since this would make some of the, the things that I've done not work, I will just delete this new attribute, activate it, or validate and activate. Um, and you can also create association. I would and I would imagine that this has something to do with you can set some person in charge of a handiwork or something like that. So we go back. Then we need this uh, rule service, and the rule service takes an input and an output element. So we we say we are using the the work type as input, and the output is a person. Uh, runtime, and also here we need the cloud. And here we have the approver. Here we have created a decision table. Um, and this, I guess, is the, the interesting part where it's really possible to see this is a compare or decision table we're creating here. So here we have created the decision table. And we'll just change this one to YouTube. Uh, so in these values, we can specify that if we're getting a work type of this type, then it should use this one. Um, if we know that we would always search for equal to, we can also put this up in, in this criteria here. Um, so if we know we'll always search for, for two values, we can always put them in up here. Um, and I guess then we have this policy that it should just return the first match or all matches uh, for these things. Um, but if we just go in here, first match, uh, that's okay. Um, so here we can specify some other uh, attribute and it's pretty simple to so duration of work and then we can specify that uh, is equal to so this I guess does not really make sense but it just shows you what you can specify of these uh, elements um, and I think you can also put a lot of other values into this. Um, like, so here we have, uh, if, if yesterday is equal to, or earliest, if, if today equals true, maybe then we can say, 
if yeah so you got some some extra options here uh, uh, to put these uh, in values into this uh, and then you just say uh, activate and then that should be fine and don't want to make these changes so it will r roll back Oh, and it seems like it has not fully updated the table here. Let's see if it functions now. Okay, so it took a little while, I just paused the video. Um, and we are back to, to these values. And then the last thing here is... Um, this uh, business rule set we have. And in here we are just defining a list of the different rules we have in our set. Um, that's it. Um, and then once we have made any changes, we need to deploy our rule service again. So we'll just say deploy. And then it's deployed. Now we can start calling it. And uh, as I mentioned before, I think there's this uh, API uh, and in, in the in the help there's uh, some samples about how to invoke this from from java service um, the thing i had so first we're getting this uh, xcf token and then afterwards we're calling uh, using the invoke method on the rules and the company uh, to get those data so if we have this invoke um, So we would call, with this we would get the token, we would add the token to the header, and then we will, I don't know why it's supposed to be logging in multiple times, and then we'll just send it, what are the object type, what are the values we are getting, and then based on that, so I'm just calling the service down here. So obviously this could be optimized a little because I'm not saving any of the the values. So if I had to do this, I would probably move this one into the the context uh, process context instead of having to do this every time. Um, yes. So let's try to run. And we can see here it, it gets the values from from our BRM table. So yes, it's uh, it's interesting. It it works, um, and you got a good API to call and and use these things. So I guess the last thing just to cover is how this compares. So I've been doing projects on uh, the process orchestration uh, BRM, and just this is based on that comparison so in this one in C C uh, south cloud platform it's really simple to create uh, new rules uh, of rule sets um, you don't have to do that much there's a full api for it so you can do everything by api so you don't need to use sap's uh, interface for it but probably it's it's a good idea to do that um, at least until they figure out what's going on. And then you have the maintenance, um, which I guess is, is a little tricky about how do we transport these things and how do we make sure it, it, it's correct. Um, so I think you need to, to export the project in some form and import it the, on the new system. But it's easy and you get a, a good API for it.
uh, if you are comparing with process orchestration, then process orchestration it has the decision tables and this are the these are the two objects that you would compare and these things. Um, but on top of that, it has some other functionalities uh, like flow services. So if you're giving it, uh, it can select between multiple different tables that have uh, different logic you can apply um, in some of the processes. So I don't know if how much that is used. Um, you have the ability to to download the content as Excel, upload it, uh, transport the whole thing with CTS Plus. Um, there's also the, the the option to have rules for the approver. So every user would be able to, or a, a user would be able to edit the rule and someone else would be able to approve it. And you can make this uh, really yeah, specific. So I as a user is only able to edit one BRM data table and someone else has to approve it. So that's a lot more flexible in that. Uh, having said that, I don't think that people are using all of those features that much and the, if you want the Excel, I guess you can create it yourself using some upload uh, API. Um, so it's definitely a useful tool. Uh, it's giving people an easy way of figuring out how do we create these uh, different kind of things. So I hope you like it. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, comment on, on this blog post, uh, like it, uh, just help me share this message about what, what's going on in, in this space. So until we meet again, goodbye.